Prime Minister Stuart lords the legacy of his predecessor. Barbadians to pay slightly less for diesel and gasoline as of midnight tonight. And in sports, Lakers one step away from being crowned local basketball champs. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. Very good evening to you. I'm Sophie Cambridge with this Sunday, October 16th edition of the CBC Evening News. In our top story tonight, the late Prime Minister David Thompson has left a legacy that is much more valuable than monuments, highways or even vast amounts of legislation. That's the assertion from Prime Minister Frundle Stewart, who was speaking during a launch, book launch rather, encompassing the thoughts, words and vision of his predecessor. Lisa Broom has the details. Prime Minister Pandal Stewart told a capacity audience at the Hilton Hotel last night that the book Barbados is more than an economy, it's a society, celebrates the legacy of his predecessor, David Thompson. Mr. Stewart said two years in office was not enough to allow Mr. Thompson to build the usual edifices associated with being leader of a country, but what he left in the hearts and minds of Barbadians was much more valuable. Mr. Stewart said the book highlights what his predecessor thought was important to Barbados' development. The creation of a society held together by a core of values that allow people to respect one another, not to covet what other people have, to rejoice when other people succeed, to commiserate when other people fail and, of course, to see themselves, to see ourselves as part of one vast human family. The Prime Minister described Mr. Thompson as a special political figure who left a mark on the political landscape of the country. The book, which contains just over 200 quotes from the late Prime Minister, was edited by Education Minister Ronald Jones. He told the audience he was honoured to write the book, the first of a trilogy of works focusing on the late Prime Minister, and explained the rationale for doing it. Obviously with David's passing, it not only left a void in the life of his immediate family, but it also left a void in, in all of us, in all Barbadians. Um, and I thought that I should find some way of bringing back to Barbadians his voice in the written word. Meantime, friend and political advisor Hartley Henry described the book as compelling, adding that it revealed Mr. Thompson's commitment to the rebuilding of and refocusing of the Barbadian dream. At the end of the night, both Prime Minister Stewart and Minister Jones signed copies of the book which were presented to the late Prime Minister's mother, Margaret Knight, his father, Charles Thompson, and wife, Mara Thompson, who said the book meant a lot to the Thompson family. Lisa Broom, CBC News. Albanian motorists will be paying slightly less for gasoline and diesel as of midnight tonight, but they'll have to dig a little deeper into their pockets to pay for kerosene. That's because the retail price of gasoline will decrease by seven cents and will now sell for three dollars and eighteen cents. The price of diesel moves to two dollars and seventy-seven cents, while kerosene will increase by one cent and will now cost one dollar and eighty-seven cents. However, Barbadians will be paying more for liquefied petroleum gas in the days ahead. Effective midnight tonight, the retail price of a 100-pound cylinder moves from $176.66 to $181.98, up by $5.32. The price of the 25-pound cylinder will now be $48.14, while the 20-pound cylinder goes up by $1.06 to be retailed at $38.51 per bottle. Employees at the Barbados Statistical Service have received high praise for responding to and meeting the heavy demand placed on the entity over the last year, despite its limited resources. The praise from Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Finance, Senator Jepta Ince, during the BSS recent awards ceremony. 
According to him, the employees have risen to the challenges of the times and he believes their performance has been outstanding. You have been asked to conduct the population and housing census, the country assessment of living conditions, the household budget survey, the labor force survey, in addition to the other aspects of your mandate, strengthening of the national accounting and constant price estimates, the informal sector survey, the retail price index, the index of industrial production, and finally, the modernization of the BSS. Two teenagers are expected to appear in court tomorrow to answer a murder charge. They're Rashad Akil Leroy Holder, who's 19 years old, of Orange Grove in St. Joseph, and 19-year-old Dario Omar Catlin of First Step Ellerton in St. George. They're jointly charged with murdering 62-year-old Rudolph Knight of Blackman Tenantry in St. Joseph just over two years ago on April 3rd, 2009. Knight was found along a cart road with injuries to his head. He died at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital on the 10th of April that year. Investigations by the Major Crimes Squad over the period led to the arrest recently of Catlin and Holder. The Ministry of Agriculture is seriously concerned about the number of local fishermen who are continuing to harvest young dolphin despite numerous pleas to desist from the practice. Officials at the Fisheries Division say there have been wide-scale reports of people still capturing and selling large numbers of juvenile dolphin. Reports are that two to six pound dolphin are still being sold by fishermen which are way below the satisfactory weight for harvest. An official at the Fisheries Division says the capture of these young dolphin before they have had the opportunity to reproduce will seriously reduce and impair dolphin stock in the long term. Anglican priest, the Reverend Merlene Lucas, is concerned that the priorities of some people living in societies like Barbados may be contributing to some of the problems relating to world hunger. She was delivering the sermon at the St. Bartholomew's Anglican Church to mark World Food Day, the theme of which is food prices from crisis to stability. Reverend Lucas says recent statistics from the Food and Agriculture Organization suggest that enough food is being produced today to adequately feed the world. But the Reverend says there's something very wrong with a world in which, on the one hand, a billion people cannot get enough to eat to secure their health, while another billion threaten their health by overeating. We are so happy enjoying life, the convenient, the comfortable life, that we have our priorities wrong. We sit down, we depend on imports, all the fancy food that is made available to us. We complain when commodities are short, but many of us cannot attest to having a, a kitchen garden or planting at least something in our backyards. And according to Reverend Lucas, of even greater concern is what appears to be a lack of compassion which some countries display toward others. We are blaming the individual as well as governments are now using the recession as an excuse not to help others, not to give. And then there's the problem of government control. Yes, there is help from time to time that come to these poor countries from free and prosperous countries but we need to get to the people. In more news of World Food Day, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon says more than 13 million people in the Horn of Africa are affected by one of the region's worst droughts in 60 years. This is the Globe observers, observes World Food Day. Mr. Ban says the hunger in the Horn of Africa is but a fraction of a needless global menace, noting that there's more than enough food on the planet to feed everyone, yet nearly a billion people are going hungry. 
Mr. Ban is urging world leaders in rich and poor countries to invest the energy and resources necessary to win the battle against hunger, a key pillar of our efforts to achieve the Millennium Development Goals. This year's World Food Day highlights the issue of price volatility, resulting in the world's poorest people spending up to 80% of their income on food. In the region now, the authorities in St. Vincent and the Grenadines are continuing their investigations into the cause of a blaze that partially damaged a building housing the office of the Prime Minister and several other government departments last night. The firefighters were summoned to the administrative centre on reclamation site to put out the blaze that sent black smoke billowing into the night sky from the building commonly referred to as the finance complex. Reports say that the fire was contained to the third floor in a section which houses the Ministry of Planning. The office of the Prime Minister is located on the fifth floor of the complex, which also houses the Cabinet Room, along with the Ministries of Foreign Affairs, Trade and the Treasury Department.